Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm just going to give it a, um, a minute or two so that people can join so that we don't start and people miss the very beginning. Um, but hello if you're joining us on StreamYard. Hello if you're joining us on, on YouTube, on X, not Twitter, on X, or obviously on, uh, on LinkedIn. Um, I'm Georgie Ryan Kasling. I'm the head of marketing and partnerships for Wittekio. Um, and in a minute, we'll get started. And I look forward to, to hosting this event for you. So if we'll just leave it for one minute and then I will get started. Okay, perfect. So, hi everyone. So, as I said, I'm Georgie, the head of marketing and partnerships with Techio, and welcome to this webinar today in partnership with Avnet, who uh, are obviously, but Techio is an Avnet company, so it's an even closer collaboration than ever. Um, today's webinar is all about navigating cloud connectivity and platform ownership for device makers. A little bit of a mouthful, but we got there. And in a minute, you are going to be introduced to our amazing speakers. But before then, I'm just going to quickly go over the, the rough agenda for you so you know what's coming up and nothing is a surprise. So first of all, we're going to go over the IoT trends, key challenges and opportunities, followed by more of an in-depth uh, software look at IoT management best practices. Then we're going to talk about the security considerations. There's going to be an overview of Avnet Core and software partners, so how Avnet and Wotekio and other people in the ecosystem work together to help you with your connected devices. Uh, we're going to talk about enhancing control and flexibility of IoT, IoT, uh, IoT lifecycle and connected solutions, and then finally streamlining device development and management. So quite a lot to get through, but all hopefully very interesting. Um, if you are on YouTube, if you are on LinkedIn, if you are on X, please ask your questions in the, the threads or in the comments in the chats. I will be able to see them and we will be answering any questions you have at the very end. Don't be shy. We love to, we love to have your questions and uh, we look forward to answering them at the end. So yes. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to our speakers and let them do it themselves. I'll stop talking. So first of all, if I hand you over to Trevor, if you could tell us who you are and what you are in Avnet. Senior Account Executive for Connected Solutions and uh, love working with uh, our business units like Wetechio and, and the others to uh, really drive customer value and uh, help them help them accomplish their goals. Uh, I'm here to support the, the resources that Avnet has in the field sales from an OEM standpoint and uh, happy to be here. Thank you, Georgie. Okay, Gabe. Sure. Hey, everyone. My name is Gabe Avalos. I'm a cloud engineer here at Wetechio. My main focus is on working on cloud integrations for embedded devices. Nice to meet you. Perfect. And finally, Anatoly. Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody who's listening. So my name is Anatoly. I'm responsible for business and channel management, uh, development and management here in North America. Uh, 20 plus years working with companies who are building smart and connected devices. And yeah, uh, located in Phoenix and here to to hopefully provide some valuable information how to how to build those devices. Hopefully. Um, yeah, sorry, Georgie. Uh, and that's, I think that's a good segue for explaining just uh, very quickly who and what Wetechio is. So you guys have some context. Uh, so Wetechio, like Georgie mentioned before, is an Avnet company. Uh, Avnet bought Wetechio roughly four or five years ago. Uh, Wetechio is focused on delivering and providing customers embedded and IoT software services. So we design, build, and run Check to cloud platforms for our for our customers who are device makers and OEMs. Uh, we've been in the industry for 21 plus years, uh, specifically uh, focused on serving uh, customers in this field. We have five offices globally. Uh, our main 
office in North America is, is in Seattle, and we have 180 uh, with Tiki and some board across the world, um, helping helping our customers to deliver great products. Uh, and taking a look a little bit. Uh, deeper into our skill set. So what we do, uh, again, uh, we always been focused on embedded type of devices and embedded type of software. So we have a very close understanding and knowledge about the hardware, although hardware is not our main expertise, but we have a lot of, a lot of understanding on that side for the obvious reasons. Uh, where our expertise really starts is it starts from the low level software development, BSPs, driver firmware, going all the way to the OS uh, layer, building the BSPs, building distributions, optimizing distributions, uh, as well as then building uh, user interfaces and applications. And then obviously the cloud connectivity and enabling the cloud connectivity for the embedded devices as uh, uh, we're gonna talk more about that today. So as mentioned before, we have always worked with uh, device makers and OEMs. So as you can see from this slide here, so we have customers in various different fields and the slides doesn't even uh, have everything that we have done nearly enough. So we do over 300 projects per year with our customers enabling their embedded software and enabling their devices uh, in medical field, industrial field, uh, applications, home appliances, and so on and so forth. So uh, that's that's a really quickly about us and, and now really into the beef of, of today's agenda. So uh, if we talk a little bit about the key trends in North America and why not globally as well, but uh, we, we are here specifically focusing on having North American focus here today. Uh, there's really a couple of things that we wanted to highlight uh, as being a key trends uh, when you talk about connected device and, and IoT device. Uh, really security and regulations being one of the huge one. So there's a lot of discussions and a lot of new regulations coming in this field. For example, the, there's a Internet of Things Cybersecurity Improvement Act that generally prohibits using an IoT devices after the December 4, 2022, if device is not compliant with the NIST standards. And there's a plenty of other other regulations from the security and cybersecurity perspective that are coming up uh, that Gabe is going to be talking about later on. But generally speaking, the whole security topic is becoming more and more uh, serious and is becoming more of a talking point. How how do you make sure that device that it is connected uh, stays secure after you deploy that? Uh, the other big uh, trend is edge computing. So obviously when more sophisticated and more performance comes and goes to the edge on your devices, uh, there's a lot of discussion like how to balance what functionalities you are going to do on the edge, what functionalities are gonna do in the cloud, uh, what is the what is the balance between those, and um, how to make sure you have a you have a connectivity strategy and cloud strategy that supports supports these these new uh, options and new possibilities on the edge as well. And the third is high bandwidth connectivity. Obviously, that's kind of an enabler of the connected devices and growth of connected devices in the field. So for example, uh, North American service providers have deployed 5G uh, in the low band uh, that will already cover 95% of the population and in the mid band that covers 85% population by the end of 2024, uh, sorry, 2023. So that's already a very significant uh, high bandwidth available there uh, that is really driving uh, and accelerating uh, uh, usage of the connected devices and also usage of the cloud services to support those connected devices. 
So obviously those trends have their unique challenges uh, and some of the challenges we're going to be talking about today and some of the biggest challenges we see uh, in the market are software maintenance and security. Again, I, I spent a lot of times in a previous slide talking about security and obviously that's that's a huge challenge. So not only the security, how to secure your device on the day when it's released, but also how to secure the that pipe to the cloud, uh, how to secure that connectivity, and how to secure also the the maintenance, meaning that how how can you make sure that your device stays secure after it's being deployed and after it's been on the field for several years to come. Uh, the other big big challenge is uh, user in, uh, user experience and in, in interoperability issues. Uh, so once you start getting different applications on so system, you have a web app, you have a mobile app, you have a user interface on your device, how do you make sure that that user experience stays similar uh, and consistent and, and you're actually taking advantage of these new, uh, new features and functionalities of the hardware, new features and functionalities of the cloud uh, the, that uh, allows you to build these more, um, more intuitive and better user experience, and also the in making sure that uh, your devices and your applications are interoperable uh, and work efficiently between each other. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> jumping, jumping to the next one, skipping a couple of ones on the previous one, but uh, just want, <laughs> just want to also must, thank you, Georgie. Uh, also mention about the data privacy and power consumption efficiency. Uh, so obviously data privacy is related to that security topic we already mentioned. So especially if you have a device that is going to store one way or the other, some personal data or some user data, how do you manage that? How do you make sure if you store that on device, how do you manage that? Or if, you want, if you're going to store that on the back end, uh, how, how, how to manage that whole, whole uh, process there in a, in a in a way in a secure manner and then obviously optimizing that power consumption efficiency which kind of ties into that trend of having uh, more performance available on the edge but then at the same time this is the balance that we we work with a lot of our customers to find that balance like okay how much performance you can put on the edge without sacrificing the power consumption and efficiency of your edge device how much many things you're going to do in the cloud uh, but, but also not in a way that you're going to spend a tremendous amount of money on the cloud services because you're doing everything there and not really use, utilizing that edge uh, edge performance that you have. So combining combining those two balancings, all those three aspects basically is, is a big, big challenge for our customers. All right, and with that, <laughs> that I will give it up to, to our uh, connected device and, and cloud connectivity guru, Gabe. Great, thanks Anatoly. All right, so uh, today I wanted to share uh, some common best practices uh, for managing your IoT device in the cloud. Implementing these practices uh, will help address some of the challenges mentioned by uh, Anatoly, and it can also help uh, ensure that your device management solution uh, is secure and robust. So for starters, uh, we wanna make sure we have a secure device provisioning in place. Uh, automating this process will help reduce uh, deployment time and also lowers the risk of manual errors. Uh, this process involves configuring your device uh, so that it can communicate securely with the cloud. Uh, and, or, and in order for it to do that, uh, the cloud platform will need to authenticate your device's identity. So one way uh, to achieve that is uh, through the use of X509 certificates. Uh, so in this image below here, uh, you can see a provisioning scenario uh, that uses certificates. The first step uh, involves uh, acquiring an X509 certificate uh, and then registering that certificate with the cloud platform uh, that you choose. So in this example, uh, let, let's say you're using Azure IoT Hub. Uh, you can then generate uh, an intermediate certificate uh, to use during manufacturing. Uh, this certificate can then be used to generate unique uh, device certificates uh, for each device. Uh, when the devices connect to the cloud, they will present their certificate uh, to, the plat to the cloud platform, and then the cloud platform can authenticate each device uh, and allow a communication to happen between uh, the device and the cloud. 
So uh, X509 certificates, a uh, great way to secure device uh, to cloud communication. Uh, throughout this process, though, you want to make sure that the certificates are stored uh, in a secure fashion uh, and that it can only be accessed by authorized individuals uh, or services. So another option here is to use a trusted platform module or secure element. Uh, this option provides hardware-based device security. You can choose to either store uh, device keys or certificates uh, in the TPM. The TPMs can be provided by a secure element vendor uh, and then placed on your board during the manufacturing process. Uh, using a trusted secure element vendor uh, can help reduce uh, the, the burden of uh, securing uh, the provisioning process. Lastly, uh, you also have the option of using uh, symmetric keys. Symmetric keys are a fairly simple and, and uh, some fairly simple to use and are, are quite cost effective, uh, but definitely much less secure. Uh, typically, you would only use symmetric keys in development and uh, testing environments. It is definitely possible to use them, uh, but a lot of times, though, these keys are left open and unencrypted on the device. Uh, so if you do choose to use them, you want to make sure uh, that you have a way to securely retrieve and store uh, the key on the device. Uh, if you're using X509 certificates, your IoT solution will need to have a way to easily manage uh, the device certificate lifecycle. So make sure you have a, a solid uh, certificate rotation policy in place uh, that matches your business requirements. First thing uh, usually that you want to do is you want to make sure uh, that you check the expiration dates on your certificates. Make sure the expiration period uh, lines up with your business needs. Uh, that date can definitely uh, be based on your business requirements, but it also will probably be influenced by compliance and regulation requirements uh, as well. So it's essential here that uh, your cloud solution is able to rotate device certificates before they actually expire. Uh, having this proactive approach uh, can prevent unnecessary downtime uh, due to expired certificates. Usually, uh, this may require some additional development or integration uh, with cloud services uh, to, mon to monitor the, uh, the expiration date uh, for the device certificates. So for example, uh, you could have a service running in your cloud platform uh, that periodically checks the expiration dates uh, for the devices. Uh, if it finds a cert that's nearing expiration, uh, it'll trigger a workflow to update the device certificate uh, before it actually expires. Um, automating that deployment of the new certificate uh, would be the recommended practice, but at the very least, uh, you should definitely have monitoring or at least some way to report the state of your device certificates um, before um, uh, that, that should definitely be at the top of your priority list. Uh, and then finally here, the, uh, the ability to revoke certificates uh, is definitely helpful if you suspect uh, that the device has been compromised. Uh, this will help reduce uh, the risk of unauthorized access and also provide a, a quick method uh, to prevent malicious activities uh, within your cloud platform. Um, in addition to authenticating devices, IoT cloud platforms like AWS IoT Core and Azure IoT Hub have device access policies. Uh, these policies define the permissions um, a device has and also the actions, the different actions that a device can take. Uh, you can use these policies to restrict or grant access to various cloud resources. So here uh, we have a simple example that shows an AWS IoT core policy. Uh, when you attach this policy to a device, uh, that device will be able to publish, receive, and subscribe notifications uh, that are related to specific uh, shadow service for a device. Uh, this means that um, the, the device will be able to be notified uh, whenever state changes occur uh, in the device's shadow. So you can create policies that uh, target uh, groups of devices or you can uh, create a policy that targets individual devices, right? So using these policies uh, adds an additional layer of security by controlling the operations on the device. And just like when you create uh, user access policies, uh, you wanna make sure you implement the uh, principle of least privilege here to ensure that only authorized devices can connect and interact uh, with your cloud platform. Uh, monitoring is uh, another vital component uh, for the success of your device. Uh, your IoT solutions should definitely include auditing, auditing and monitoring systems uh, that collect and report various uh, activity metrics. Um, 
that your platform creates. Uh, you want to be able to uh, use this data to create a baseline uh, to detect uh, anomalies. And in addition to that, uh, you're going to want to be able to, you could use like um, the, the data to view the number of connections that your device has or the different uh, the number of messages that have been published and, and received. And so there's a screenshot here uh, that shows a dashboard that provides uh, useful information. Uh, again, going back to the total number of connections, number of messages, and also uh, uh, shadow information as well. Uh, in addition to collecting that data, uh, make sure you're monitoring uh, the cloud platform data as well. Uh, that will include uh, things like your end user met metrics, application usage, or uh, network and security logs. Um, so depending on your requirements, uh, you may want to utilize other cloud services to handle things like uh, data storage, data analytics, uh, and even BI tools. You may also need to uh, build custom integrations into other third-party services, or you might require some cloud-to-device communication uh, to perform some actions uh, on the device. So each cloud provider has different services um, that will fit your needs. For example, you have uh, AWS, you've got S3 for blob storage. Uh, and then in Azure, you've got Azure blob storage. Uh, if you want, you may want to uh, create some API uh, gateway endpoints uh, to allow your device to have some secure endpoints to communicate with. Uh, and then you may also want to use something like Azure Stream Analytics if you have a requirement to, to process uh, device telemetry in real time. So the service you choose uh, will ultimately depend on how you want to use your data. Uh, one other possibility, uh, as Anatoly mentioned, could be edge processing. Uh, if your device is capable of edge computing, uh, it, you want to think about processing that data locally uh, on the device instead of uploading it to the cloud. Uh, that would definitely be helpful in scenarios where your device is, uh, has like intermittent uh, connection. Um, for connected devices, uh, over the year support is vital to help uh, keep devices secure. Uh, IoT solution needs a mechanism to push software uh, and firmware updates uh, in the, to devices in the field to help patch security vulnerabilities and improve device functionality. Uh, you want to make sure uh, you follow like a protocol when deploying updates and also uh, you'll want visibility into the status of deployments so that you can be aware of uh, possible issues with uh, transferring updates or installing them. So if there's issues with deploying security updates, uh, you may want, you'll, you'll need to have a plan in place uh, in order to get that update installed and that particular device. In some cases, this may require uh, sending a, a technician or, or um, an operator to manually install uh, the update. We know that those can definitely be costly. Uh, so it's critical uh, that you have a robust update system in place uh, that has uh, ideally built with built-in failure failover mechanisms as well. Uh, so lastly, be sure to track your costs. Uh, cloud providers here uh, have various ways to charge customers. Uh, so it's important to generate the estimates and compare them to actual data usage. Uh, we find that uh, small changes to the architecture could definitely add up to big cost savings uh, in the long run. Uh, so for example, um, you think about using a self-hosted database as opposed to a managed uh, hosted database service, or even taking a look at the data, at data transfer costs and seeing if there's a way to possibly compress the data or maybe even reduce the actual number of uh, data transfers uh, that actually occur as well. Um, so there are various ways um, to address the different challenges that uh, connected device manufacturers experience uh, when building and deploying their devices. Uh, focusing on these items uh, will definitely help uh, manufacturers uh, build a streamlined device management solution. Right. So implementing an IoT solution with secure architecture will allow you to build devices capable of protecting sensitive data. Uh, this will help address uh, any sort of data privacy concerns that you have. Uh, adding automation to both provisioning and monitoring services uh, can help reduce the deployment time and also unexpected downtime uh, for your devices. Uh, the centralized monitoring will allow manufacturers uh, to have a proactive response to any sort of device issues that pop up in the field. Um, it can also provide insight into device health or um, other things such as uh, devices power consumption and efficiency. Uh, that data can then be used to improve uh, future device designs. And then uh, providing device updates over the air 
uh, will help protect devices and provide new features uh, for users as well. Uh, this can help address security issues and fix things like UX and interoperability, interoperability issues. <laughs> uh, and also, of course, uh, thinking about how your services and devices will scale uh, as, dem as demand grows will be uh, important as well. Uh, so as you're thinking uh, about uh, these best practices and how they apply to connected devices, uh, the one thing that you're going to want to keep in mind uh, is you want to be able to focus on security. Uh, so you want to view security uh, as an investment as opposed to an expense. Investing in security uh, in your devices and your infrastructure uh, will help you build devices that consumers trust. So for example, um, having a security expert perform a cybersecurity risk assessment uh, can help you find uh, and address uh, any possible security issues before they occur in the field. Uh, investing in monitoring will give you that visibility into the health uh, and status of your devices and can help you detect any possible security threats as well. And then uh, doing things like implementing a secure, secure boot on your device can help ensure uh, that your device can only run uh, signed and authorized software. So in addition to investing uh, to investing in security, uh, you need to keep an eye on the constantly evolving uh, standards and guidelines uh, for device security. So lots of resources out there uh, that'll help. Uh, for example, the OWASP IoT project and the NIST A259 series documentations all serve as guidelines for manufacturers as they develop and support uh, connected devices. The US IoT security, uh, cybersecurity improvement act that uh, Anatole had mentioned there is really meant to establish security standards for devices that are used by the government. And then uh, finally, the US Cyber Trust Mark program, uh, which was launched last year, is a certification and labeling program uh, for consumer IoT devices. So the intent of that program is to help uh, consumers identify uh, trustworthy devices. So as more, uh, and more connected devices are produced, uh, we'll continue to see a big push for security standards uh, that help strengthen security and ensure privacy. Uh, so make sure you're familiar with these guidelines and uh, doing so will help devices be compliant uh, with future security standards uh, and regulations. Thanks. Um, I think I will now hand it over to Trevor, uh, who will talk a little bit more about IoT solutions from Watekio and Apple. Yeah, thank you, Gabe, that, uh, and Anatoly. That was uh, fantastic. Thank you for uh, taking us through some of those uh, best practices. And, you know, what, what I'm here to kind of contribute to the conversation is really how Avnet can bring together that hardware and software, um, you know, complete value proposition, complete product strategy, and really deliver that in a meaningful manner. So, you know, when we look at Avnet as a whole, we've been around for 103 years and, and we've done a really great job of, you know, providing components and uh, driving value with both of our silicon manufacturers and our OEMs in delivering, you know, solutions that, that make sense to them. Um, over the last six or seven years, obviously, we've we've changed our structure. We've added some companies. We've We've gone to uh, the well a few times to reinvent ourselves. Uh, Watekio is obviously a really big part of that. Um, so I'm just happy again to be here today to, to talk a little bit about, you know, that entire value proposition. But it, it is um, meaningful to our customers that we can now take their, their entire product strategy from hardware and software and really drive a lot of the different value propositions um, right on right onto their doorstep right so whether that is a connected solution um, cloud application development or whether that's embedded modules or embedded software services or complete advanced um, applications then you know avnet's here to kind of make that make that happen along with everything we've also done since you know we were we were uh, we were born on radio row in yeah 1921 so um Next slide, Georgie, and and we'll we'll get through this because I think we're probably getting a little short on time. But you know, when we want to um, talk about connected solutions and what it what is going on in the market, more and more customers are really 
looking at their projects as, as connected solutions simply because they're trying to create different outcomes, not only for themselves, but for their end customers. So when we do market research and market intelligence and, and we see what kind of applications are being utilized, this is a good slide to kind of reference on you know, sensor-driven applications or industrial or connected vehicles, smart buildings, and just, you know, the the thought process of, you know, people that are in the market designing electronics is, you know, going to be very, very important to take into account some of those things that Anatoly and Gabe talked about as far as security, because all these devices are going to be out there in the market. And realistically, um, they've got to adhere to some of those those security strategies. They've got to adhere to some of those compliance strategies and, and governance. So um, just a nice slide to kind of put up that, you know, there's more than one response here on each of these uh, market intelligence slides that kind of tell you a little bit about, you know, there, there might be multiple concerns or there might be multiple, um, you know, product SKUs that you're trying to address as a, as a device builder, as a device manufacturer and, and solutions delivery um, OEM. Um, next slide, Georgie. And, you know, what's important, again, in that encryption, authentication, that secure OTA that Gabe talked about and Anatoly talked about, you know, being able to um, make sure that that attack plane that you've got, whether it's 1,000 devices, 10,000 devices, 100,000 devices is secure, whether it's an... Uh, whether it's a phone, whether it's a watch, whether it's just a, a piece of industrial equipment, I mean, there are compliance and governance regulations coming into place that are going to be very important to, to adhere to. So what we do see, you know, as far as um, what you're going to need in the future to manage that attack plane is a very robust MCU or MPU security feature and that's probably going to still include a secure element and and some other thoughtful management of that device because we have bad actors out there. And, you know, as far as full lifecycle management, this is really important to OEMs. Um, at the end of the day, it, you know, you're you're we're out there designing these products, um, obviously taking them to market and deploying them. Uh, trying to manage them in a way that creates business outcomes for you and your end customers. But at the end of the day, you know, as Gabe kind of referenced too, at some point you decommission them, right? And that's where you have to be able to not only identity, uh, generate the identity of the device and do pre-provisioning and, and onboarding and all that wonderful stuff. One of the one of the things that people aren't still thinking about some days, I find anyway, maybe that's my personal opinion, is at some point we have to also manage the decommissioning of these devices. So some of the things that Watekio really does well within the Avnet circle of life of, of device management is helping us with all those four key quadrants. So I want to give them props for that. Um, when we look at our secure device continuum, um, Gabe mentioned a couple of things like using the the X509s and such. Uh, we find that that is, you know, it's, it's a fantastic strategy for POCs. Um, what we do find is that, yeah, that device onboarding takes a little bit more thoughtfulness. And we often want to do um, silicon fingerprints, for lack of a better description, so that we can do bulk imports and bulk, out, you know, exports as far as um, that device management and that life cycle is concerned that we showed you in the previous slide. So um, we're finding a lot of uh, intelligence being put into that better portion of software um, security and partitioning. So trust zones and secure elements and, and then additional tokens or, or X509 management. Uh, when we get to the best hardware isolation, obviously that gets a little bit more complexity and a little bit more cost. But at the end of the day, the risk is is kind of mitigated. So it's it's that balancing act between the cost, the complexity, and the risk that uh, we want to make sure is relevant to your business and and your outcome. So you know we do have a strategy here, and if you'd like to talk to us about it, uh, Watekio is uh, right here with us. So um, where we find we bring value to you as Avnet is that. 
we're not just thinking about, hey, how do, you know, what what new MCU or what M MPU are you doing? We're thinking about the embedded technologies. We're partnering with suppliers like Renaissance and NXP and ST and Intel and all the market leaders that are on this slide to enable, you know, their devices to be distributed and onboarded in a, in a very meaningful manner in a connected solution. So we kind of, you know, always used to be the, the binding glue, that distribution partner that could provide you with, you know, those semiconductors and that connection to those suppliers and that supply chain management and all those, those great things that um, we've done over the years. And now we're trying to bring in that new value to you that says, hey, we can also help you onboard, you know, hardware solutions. We're working with our manufacturers to make sure that we have secure devices and secure services, um, excuse me, <clears throat> embedded software, um, SDKs, managed services that are that are going to be important to you as you move forward with your product strategy. Um, where we see the building blocks is really, you know, again, that device manufacturer so those those leading those leading partners that we have and Witekio obviously helping us enable some of those Linux developments or driver developments um, device onboarding authentication etc and really see that building block all the way through each stage in a connected solution um, whether we're using some of our middleware platforms like IOT connect and utilizing you know, some of that strategy with our other business units and with Techio to onboard edge applications or new firmware applications or drivers, and then connect in a, in a way to the hyperscalers, AWS and Microsoft Azure, or even uh, perhaps Google. But you know, these, are, these are things that obviously drive business applications that are developed by ROEMs and enabled through our IoT Connect API along with you know, what, what Techio does from a device enablement strategy. So really combining that whole entire value stream and value proposition. And I will turn it back over to Gabe and Anatoly. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Trevor. Thank you, Gabe. Uh, I think it was a uh... There was a lot of information there. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you guys listening were able to to contextualize at least some of it. And and again, obviously, uh, we are we are here for you. If you have any questions, feel free to to type them in the chat or comments or wh whatever you're looking this webinar. Uh, so yeah, just to just to kind of give you also a little bit of ideas how how we are helping customers with these challenges uh, from from our side. So we, we obviously, uh, as mentioned, we've been in the industry for 20, 21 plus years and, and really uh, like to brag a little bit of the fact that we, we actually understand uh, how how to build this type of products and how to help our customers to build this type of products, uh, specifically for, from the perspective of, of uh, enabling the software and enabling the connectivity of these devices. Uh, so we actually have developed a full suite of services and products around that that will help you as a customer to uh, build secure by design product and build a secure by design connectivity for your product uh also build the device management and provisioning solution for that for your products as well uh, as well as uh, enable you to sandbox and prototype different features and functionalities of a product uh, product multi-tenant management maintenance and updates oh basically we over the years we seen these challenges over and over again and build solutions and services and products around that that will help you as a customer to jump this bandwagon much faster and much more efficiently and and scale scale uh your product development and and uh build build more efficiency in your product development and and deploying these products in a in a secure way in a way that you're actually protecting your investment into your products and I, and I think not to interrupt you, Anatoly, but I, you know, I think we'd like to reference that as we try and keep it simple, 
secure and scalable, right? In all aspects of, of how we interact with, you know, customers and, and what they're trying to achieve. Um, yeah, ab absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I think it's really, obviously this is a webinar where we try to give some, some ideas, some, some knowledge, knowledge uh, away as well is that what, what are we trying to say here that the, there are certain aspects and certain things that you perhaps want to do in-house and then there's certain apps that you perhaps want to want to outsource to somebody who has done it before or who who has resources and expertise to do it potentially more efficiently and enabling you as a customer um as an oem device maker designer of that that whatever your particular device is to focus on developing and innovating the features and functionalities of your product that are specifically uh, bringing more value to your customers. Instead of focusing a lot of the time uh, working on uh, table stakes, as, as I like to call these things. Uh, very important table stakes, but table stakes nonetheless. Uh, having a secure product is not going to not going to particularly differentiate you from the market. But if you don't have a secure product, if your product is unsecure, that will definitely differentiate you, but maybe in a wrong, wrong way. Um, so yeah, uh, again, I'm definitely not going to go through all of these bits and pieces on this slide, what we can do. Again, I, I feel that I'm, for the most part, I already explained in the very beginning where what, what we can do, where, where we have a lot of expertise. Um, so we are the full stack embedded software services uh, house uh, that has uh, 300 projects per year experience working around these products. Uh, anything around Linux, drivers, OS, uh, as well as the RTOSs, uh, all the way to the embedded applications, human machine interfaces, user interfaces. And obviously, last but definitely not the least, the whole topic of today is the, really the cloud connectivity uh, and enablement of the, of the cloud and web apps and and everything that's related to that. So that's really where 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 all all of those bits and pieces are obviously very important. As a device manufacturer, you know that. Um, smart device, connected device manufacturer, you know that. Then that's where really we are here to to help you out. And yeah, um, that's kind of sums it up. I think from 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 today. Uh, and, and again, I really want to encourage you guys to reach out if you have any questions if any i know this was a pretty surface level touch on the topic uh unfortunately we only have limited amount of time and uh to, to dive in if you have any specific questions or if you're struggling with certain specific things just please please let us know and we are always happy to share share our knowledge share our experiences uh uh with uh with the uh, with the world and especially with the with our customers. Georgia, do you want to? Oh, sorry, I thought Trevor just yeah. wants to say anything yeah. else, Trevor. I just I just want to say uh, say uh, you know, Witekio is is part of is part of those device manufacturers and OEMs journey with Avnet and um, an incredibly important part uh, when it comes to. You know, again, that that product, that hardware and software strategy. So, thanks for inviting me and and having me as part of this little webinar. Really appreciate you. Absolutely, you're always welcome. Come back anytime. And um, so, thank you to all our speakers. Before I open um, the floor to any questions, I actually have a question. One, and I totally table stakes. What do you mean? You mean like a gambling table stakes or a stake for the table? Which one was it? So what what I mean by that is obviously there's a if anybody who's played poker at any point of their life is okay. that you you have to have some table stakes before you're even allowed to start start playing the game, oh, yeah. uh, and, and and that's that's really what what we're talking about here when we talk about certain basic quote unquote complex but in in a way basic functionalities of the product that it allows it to have secure functionality secure connectivity and so on and so forth 
it's it's something that uh like i tried to explain if you don't have it you will definitely differentiate yourself but in a very very wrong way if you have it you're probably not going to differentiate yourself but you have to have it and then you as a customer you can differentiate yourself on other features and functionalities because leaning uh leaning on your partners and partners like we take your partners like avnet to help you with those base building blocks allows you to free up resources to innovate and and actually develop something truly unique for your vertical for your customer base for, for your product another another way we we often um, describe it georgie is we're allowing we're, we're, i shouldn't say we're allowing um what we're encouraging is people to focus on their core competencies you know your market you know your end customers you know what your problem statement is you know what your outcome is going to be and this is what you want um so get your table stake here right is that fair anatoly yeah yeah absolutely that's that's really a freeze up freeze up the resources very scarce and limited ones which everybody knows today uh, nobody has a luxury to have uh, like unlimited resources um so you want to make sure as a customer that you're using them in the most efficient way and by efficient i mean in the in the in the most way that allows you to create that uh differentiator for for your product got you it makes complete sense okay um i'm just going to quickly check i don't think we've had any questions recently which actually means that you guys were incredibly clear and you explained everything so perfectly that no one has anything else to add which i think is a big thumbs up on my end but for everybody watching, if you do have any questions that you're um, too shy to ask, maybe online, absolutely fine. Please just either drop them to any of the speakers. They're all tagged on uh, LinkedIn. Or you can ask them to me personally, uh, to Atekio or to Avnet um, through you know online channels, which I can put in an email afterwards. And uh, we will do our best to get back to you ASAP. So I think unless anyone has anything else to say, we are good and we can end a tiny bit early. Um, so yeah, thank you so much to Gabe, to Trevor and to Anatoly. Thank you for your time and for your knowledge. Thank you for joining us and have a lovely day and evening, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Georgie. Thanks, Gabe. Thanks, Trevor. And uh, thank you. Thank you, everybody listening. Thank you, guys. Right. Have a good rest of your day and evening or, or whatever is is wherever, wherever you are. Get those table stakes Take in. Take care. <laughs>